dawn's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. My wife and I sat down with Harlan Mitchell and discussed our own estate planning needs. I know in our experience, Harlan brought up questions that caused us to think about our current situation and what we need to do moving forward. When you sit down with Harlan for your free consultation, you're going to find out things that you may have not thought about when it comes to estate planning. I encourage you to go to BamaEstatePlanning.com or give Harlan Mitchell a call at 256-216-9884 and schedule your free consultation today. Would you like enhanced energy, better moods, less fatigue, help with allergies, better sleep, mental clarity, or just want improvement of your overall immune health and well-being? Do you need to recover from intense activities, workouts, or sports? Then IV therapy at the Drip Factor inside Trinity Medical Center is right for you. Our IV drips are filled with nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that will help your body replenish, restore, and achieve your wellness goals. For more information, visit trinity-medicalcare.com and schedule your appointment today at Trinity Medical Center, located at 500 Governor's drive. Hello, my name is Christian Martinez. I'm a rising senior at Athens Bible School. My school is great because of the wonderful environment in which students can grow and flourish. We have great academics that include the university preparatory diploma and dual enrollment courses that lead to an associate's degree before high school graduation. All my teachers and the school's employees are Christians who are devoted to the welfare of students. We have an excellent student body, competitive sports program, and study the Bible first thing every day. It's a great place. Please consider joining us at ABS next year or give that special child in your life the great opportunity I have. Whether you're new to aviation or an experienced pilot looking to advance your skills, Go Vertical Aviation has you covered. With an excellent learning atmosphere and a staff committed to excellence in education, Go Vertical Aviation will customize a learning program just for you. For more information, go to GoVerticalAviation.com or call 256-412-5226. Be sure to follow Go Vertical Aviation on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Don't just go. Go Vertical. Boutique Air in Muscle Shoals, Alabama offers direct flights to Atlanta, Nashville, and Pensacola. Boutique Air service runs twice daily, seven days a week, with fares starting at $59. Follow Boutique Air Muscle Shoals on Facebook at Boutique Air MSL and book your flight through BoutiqueAir.com. Boutique Air. Where you can fly private for the cost of commercial. 
Hey everybody, this is Daryl Worley, and you're listening to The Mark White Show. Hey, step up and make a difference like he does. Hey y'all, this is Jeff Foxworthy, and you, yeah, you, can make a huge difference in somebody's life. You just may not have figured out how yet, and that's why you're listening to The Mark White Show. Hi, this is Maggie Peterson. I played Charlene Darling on The Andy Griffith Show, and you are listening to The Mark White Show. Hi folks, this is Ricky Skaggs, and you're listening to the Mark Watt Show. Hello, I'm Gene Stallings, and this is the Mark Watt Show. Get off the sideline and get involved and make a difference in your community. You are listening to the Mark Watt Show. My daddy is your host, Mark Watt. Welcome to another edition of the Mark Watt Show. I am your host, Mark Watt. And the other day on the Mark Watt Show page, I posted... Simply a Frito Lay bag. They had recognized Carry the Load on the back of their Frito bag. So I reached out to Carry the Load to find out more about this special organization. I was connected with Carry the Load Ambassador Brian Larson. Brian is on the line with me right now. Welcome to the Mark White Show, Brian. Thank you, Mark. Glad to have you on the show. I appreciate being able to talk to you today about Carry the Load and what you all are doing to help military, first responders, veterans. It sounds like a really great organization to me, Brian. It's a blessing for me to be a part of it, and I appreciate any chance I get to tell people about it. So thank you for uh, letting us come tell our story. I guess the basic question for people listening right now who have never heard of Carry the Load, maybe they haven't bought a bag of Fritos yet, what is Carry the Load, Brian? So we describe Carry the Load as a movement. Really, uh, it uh, it started out as an effort uh, by a handful of guys, uh, Stephen Holly and Clint Bruce, uh, two Navy SEALs that were uh, really kind of struck by how Memorial Day is typically recognized or celebrated by people. You know, it's it's barbecues and the kickoff to summer and and sales and all your favorite stores, uh, but. Uh, they felt like their their fallen brothers and sisters were were forgotten, uh, and so it started out as an effort uh, to restore that true meaning of Memorial Day and honor the fallen, uh, and uh, it's translated now into a, a organization that has a mission of providing an active way to honor and remember those heroes. Uh, they, they connect Americans with the sacrifices made by. Uh, the military, by veterans, first responders, by their families, uh, the load that's still being carried by Gold Star family members. Um, we do that through a, a number of events, and the one being uh, really promoted with that, that Fritos bag uh, right now is uh, in Memorial May. And we make an effort to uh, raise awareness uh, for this uh, for this movement. Uh, we've got relays walking across the country carrying flags from Kind of the four corners of the country uh, to meet here in Dallas for Memorial Day weekend, where we do our Dallas Memorial March. Uh, and we honor the memories of those uh, fallen heroes, and we use it as a way to uh, give back and raise funds uh, in that active way for a number of nonprofit partners that support uh, military, uh, active military veterans, uh, those that still need our, our support, uh, the families that some of them left behind. Uh, first responders, firefighters, police, etc. To give listeners some of your background, you graduated from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point in 2005 and were commissioned as an infantry officer. You were deployed to Baghdad, Iraq with the 1st Cavalry Division as a platoon leader and company executive officer and served in the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment called the Old Guard at Arlington National Cemetery and your final military assignment was commanding the Presidential Salute Battery. Now, yesterday, I was recognizing Matt Melancon, and Matt served in Iraq as well. He turned down the old guard to go serve in the Middle East, and he actually lost both of his legs as an IED exploded under his vehicle. Matt's story is one of courage, bravery, and taking a situation that he thought he couldn't move forward with, having both of his legs amputated, and becoming part of what's called Operation Rebound through the Challenge Athletes Foundation is now a snowboarder. <laughs> he challenges the mountains now with the snow with special equipment that he's been given through Challenged Athletes Foundation Operation Rebound. The connection here that I wanted to bring up was your military service and your passion for serving 
in this particular organization? That's a, it sounds like a great organization, and that's one of the, the types of uh, functions that I love that Carry Lo- the Load supports. You know, a lot, of what, uh, a lot of what people need assistance with, what the veterans that come home need assistance with. Uh, it could be medical, like you mentioned, going through the hospitals. A lot of it, though, is, uh, is just transition. Uh, you're losing a community, and this is a great way to reconnect with it. Uh, and and giving a new lease on life in some ways. We've got some some fantastic organizations that help with uh, finding uh, new employment for transitioning military. Don't know what they want to do uh, next. Uh, there's there's an organization, for example, called Farm that will uh, teach them how to get into the agricultural business where there's they kind of recognize the deficit of uh, transitioning military looking for a purpose and. Uh, a career field that fewer and fewer people are going into, so they'll train them in that. Or we've got uh, groups like Adaptive Training Foundation that will uh, take a, take somebody who's uh, made it through an injury, uh, some sort of a traumatic event, like a, like a limb loss in an IED, uh, like you just mentioned, and they will put them with personal trainers and teach them how to persevere and overcome and really kind of regain uh, the strength and the function and the, and the functionality uh, recognize that they're not uh, things aren't over because of this. You, you get adaptive training foundation athletes out there walking up and down the trail that carry the load. It's it's really hard to quit on a walk when you're uh, marching back and forth, reading all these memorials, and you you see a guy uh, walking on his prosthetic with a leg that says you know every day is leg day. Uh, really hard to quit when you're seeing him keep moving. Uh, so you keep on going and walking and seeing more and more of these stories that people get to share on the on the march. Absolutely. And how did you come to be an ambassador for Carry the Load, Brian? So it's just a it, the organization and being involved in it has given me so much, uh, just in terms of healing. So uh, this will be my eighth year participating in Carry the Load. Got pretty heavily involved. Uh, got a, a previous employer and a, a bunch of a bunch of folks involved uh, on a team participating in the march then and uh, when I had a, a career change was kind of reached out to the organization and asked how can I stay involved because this is this is one of the few non-negotiables in our our family's uh, calendar throughout the years we will we will be at the march every year and I'll, I'll be there start to finish uh, you know my 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 son has walked it as a as a uh, toddler uh, on a broken foot because we, we just wouldn't miss it. Uh, and we it's a place where we get to go uh, connect with a community that feels the same things that we do, that values the same things we do. Uh, and it's a great way uh, to introduce uh, in a very approachable and active way uh, what can be an unapproachable topic. Uh, you know, around uh, around this time of year, uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of memories, a lot of emotions for people that are, are remembering things. And uh, you know, sometimes it can be a, a difficult uh, idea to bring up that, you know, hey, I, I hate to interrupt your barbecue, but this is why you have this holiday. Uh, and, and this is a great thing that I've been able to invite a lot of people to come out and, and walk them up and down the trail and uh, give them an opportunity to read the memorial storyboards for fallen heroes and, and introduce them, so to speak, to uh, several of my friends that are honored on the trail and uh, allow me an opportunity to share their stories. And Brian, that really does lead to the impact that Carry the Load has had on others so far and the impact that it can have on people. You talk about Memorial Day and the things that people do on Memorial Day, and maybe this is one of those organizations that people can become aware of and suddenly it changes what Memorial Day means to them. Absolutely. I, I, I always tell people uh, if they're considering coming out to the event, you know, you always have people who have their, their uh, normal routine for Memorial Day. And, you know, I, I, I tell them, just, just come on out. You can come out to the march for, uh, in Dallas if you're here locally for 20 minutes or 20 hours. Uh, it will be going on. In either way, you're going to leave impacted. And virtually everybody who I've invited and has come out, uh, before has reached out to me afterwards and said, you know what, we, we went home and we talked about it as a family. This is what we're doing every year because this is what it's about. Uh, and now, if you're not local to Dallas, there's still plenty of ways to get involved, to, to interact with it. Uh, all of our nonprofit partners have kind of 
coalesced into this great community, this family of people uh, who are, are giving back to these, these heroes, these fallen heroes and their families. Uh, but with the national relays, uh, that's something that's really been beautiful to watch how it's grown. Uh, they cross the country, uh, and you can go to carrytheload.org, and you can see the relay routes where they're walking on any given day. If you find that they're not visiting somewhere close to you, reach out to the organization because we do rallies uh, along the relay routes. There's a West Coast route, an East Coast route, a Midwest route, a Rocky Mountains route, uh, carrying flags to converge on Dallas. And the way all of the rallies along those routes have, have come to be is somebody reached out and said, hey, I'll host something. I will, uh, I, I will be the point of contact uh, and we'll get a group of people walking across. I want a group of people walking across my hometown with flags and carrying some of these memorials and having an opportunity to share the story of the people that I want to honor. Uh, so you can, you can connect throughout the month of May with those relays. Uh, you can at any of the rallies along there, you can come to the Memorial March here in Dallas and participate that way. Uh, we, we raise funds, like I said, for the nonprofit partners. Uh, so far we've already raised over a million dollars this May. Uh, going towards those nonprofit partners well on the way to hitting our target for this year, which we're so excited about in our 10th year, uh, especially after how COVID Im impacted everything last year. Uh, as an organization, it's raised over $28.6 million uh, throughout this 10-year process for these, these great uh, organizations. We've also formed another way to be involved, uh, a partnership with the uh, National Cemetery Association. Uh, it's something that uh, gives people an opportunity to go out and volunteer. You can clean headstones. You can help the uh, the groundskeeping staff uh, there. That uh, you know, it's it's always a that's always a, a, a beautiful, somber, peaceful time to go and, and see and experience and, and and really you know honor there. So make sure that when the family or friends come to visit, it's uh, it's the kind of peaceful, beautiful place that it should be. Uh, tons of opportunities, tons of ways to get involved or, you know, springboard off of that and, and, and find one of the uh, nonprofit partners that really speaks to you and, and you have an opportunity to give back to. I actually did a show, Brian, not too long ago on national cemeteries and the impact that they have on the families who have lost loved ones and the great work that they do to honor and recognize those that we've lost in service to our country. It's an amazing effort there. Right now, folks, I'm talking to Brian Larson. He graduated from West Point in 2005 and commissioned as an infantry officer. He was deployed to Baghdad, Iraq with the 1st Cavalry Division as a platoon leader and company executive officer and served in the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, at Arlington Cemetery. His final military assignment was commanding the Presidential Salute Battery. And now I'm talking to him about carry the load he's an ambassador and when we come back i want to have a call to action you as a listener you've been hearing about carry the load and i want to give you an opportunity to plug in and be a part of carry the load effort will you stick with me brian absolutely folks i hope you'll stick with us as i continue this conversation with ambassador brian larson with carry the load you are listening to the mark white show and i'm your host mark white little wink, a pat on the back, a big old hug, a little laugh. We can make a difference, all we have to do is try. Every day's a chance to change somebody else's life. Let's all do something good today. The best way to buy, sell, and experience land is with Jonathan Berryhill. For your farm, ranch, recreational, hunting, timber, and acreage needs, contact National Land Realty Professional Jonathan Berryhill at 256-874-7354 or email at jberryhill at nationalland.com. Be sure to follow Jonathan Berryhill with National Land Realty on Facebook. This is your land. Thompson Roofing and Construction is a locally owned family business serving the North Alabama and Southern Tennessee area. They are a Better Business Bureau a member since 2011 and a GAF Master Elite Contractor. Give them a call at 
952-3309 or check them out on the web at 256roofing.com. They offer free inspections. Thompson Roofing and Construction. Is it time for a haircut? Go see my friends Philip Butler and B.H. Parker at Southwind Barbershop, located at 1637 Lee Street in Rogersville, Alabama. Give them a call at 256-247-5658. That's 256-247-5658. Mr. Cecil Batchelor is the one that started this business as Dependable Service Center. And even though now it's Green's Dependable Hardware and we're a true value store, our tagline is still your Dependable Service Center. We've tried to keep that alive for all these years. Mr. Batchelor really started a good business. We're really excited to be carrying on a long-standing tradition. It's the oldest retail store in the city of Russell. We're Green's Dependable Hardware, 15220A, Highway 43 in Russellville. Alabama. We're right behind McDonald's or right across the street from the hospital. Number is 256-331-0123. The Dependable Service Center. This is John from John's Ricky Stock. I love the Mark White Show. Trust your mind. Welcome back to the Mark White Show. I am your host, Mark White, and as I mentioned in the first segment, I saw a picture of a Fritos bag, and on the back of it, they were recognizing Carry the Load. I wanted to be able to recognize this special organization, so I reached out to them, and I was connected with Ambassador Brian Larson. He's on the line with us right now. Welcome back to the Mark White Show, Brian. Thanks, Mark. We have talked about Carry the Load, the impact that it has had thus far, We want people who have been listening to be a part of this effort. And this segment, I want to have a call to action. I want to give people an opportunity to connect with Carry the Load. And I want you to be able to share how you would like to see people connect with this organization. Absolutely. Uh, I'd say first and foremost, the mission is to restore the true meaning of Memorial Day and have an active way to do it. So first, first things first is putting that right perspective in there of why you have that holiday, understanding that researching it. We'd love to help raise the awareness with that. And so reaching out to the organization, wherever you are, whether you're involved in one of our events or not, understand what the day is about uh, and, and, and honor that because there's, that, that's, our, that's really our focus to make sure that those, those names of those fallen heroes are not forgotten. But beyond that, uh, we've got three primary programs. Uh, there are ways to get involved. Uh, one is our, our awareness program. So what you can do in the awareness program, you can submit uh, memorials You can sub- uh, to the organization. We prepare storyboards, and at our key event, our main event, the uh, Dallas Memorial March, those storyboards will be lining the street and the walking path and giving a, a, a per- everybody that goes an opportunity to read about your loved one. They'll also be posted on our on- online tribute wall. Share those stories. Uh, as long as their names are repeated, as long as their memories are out there, they can't tell the story. If, if, if you're still drawing breath, right, the Memorial Day is not honoring you. It's for those people who can't anymore, and so we have to tell their stories. So participating in uh, the awareness program is, is key there. Uh, our continuum of care program, I uh, mentioned the nonprofit partnerships. Uh, we've got I believe 49 nonprofit partners this year that serve uh, provide a variety of services to this community to those who have served and lost uh, or their loved ones, uh, and you can give back to that through donations and participation. Everybody who registers for the march, uh, you receive a, a fundraising site where you're able to go. You can customize it and tell your story. Uh, I have mine telling about uh, the people that. Uh, the question we always ask is, who are you carrying? Uh, my site tells about who I'm carrying, 
uh, and, and why this is so important to me to tell their story uh, and honor them. It allows those funds to come in. Uh, it's not something you've got to pay to participate in. Uh, you can just show up the day of, uh, but it gives you an opportunity to make your active participation give back uh, to these great programs, these great organizations that provide uh, hair, uh, care, such as adaptive training or Homes for Heroes, uh, transitions, job support, scholarships for Gold Star children. Uh, and then finally, we have our education program, which throughout the year, uh, we look for ways to inspire patriotism in our nation's youth, teach them about service and sacrifice. Uh, they, those programs, uh, we provide uh, materials, curriculum, uh, training, uh, and we can work with organizations uh, anywhere. It's something that fits in schools or church groups or scout troops or uh, anything like that. There's ways to stay involved uh, there so that we can pass on why this is so important to us to the next generation. So as far as ways to get involved, all of them can be found on uh, carrytheload.org. And by going there, you can see the national relay routes. You can see the locations of the uh, of the rallies along the national relays. You can register for the Memorial March uh, that runs from uh, some this year from Sunday, May 30th, all the way overnight and ends in the afternoon of Memorial Day itself, uh, where we'll be walking up and down the trail and raising awareness and funds there. Uh, and then ways to volunteer throughout the year, whether it's with uh, carry the flag, that education program, or volunteering at the national cemeteries, just give back and, and, and honor their sacrifice by understanding what, what it was about. Basically, be worthy of their sacrifice. Absolutely. And if people want to follow on social media, I'm guessing that there are several platforms to do that as well? Absolutely. They're on, they're on all the major social medias. We do... Um, we, we do periodic uh, live interviews. So they just recently did one with a Medal of Honor recipient who talked about the significance of the event. Uh, the, right now they're uh, doing daily Heroes of the Day throughout Memorial May, where uh, as the relays are passing through certain locations across the country, uh, they find uh, local people connected to those sites uh, that are honored uh, as part of our organization, and they share about that person and tell their story and their sacrifice. Lots of great content there. They also link to uh, all the social medias for our nonprofit partners to tell about the amazing work that they're doing and how they're participating in, in this movement as well. It's an amazing cause, Carry the Load, and I do want listeners to check it out to find out more information about Carry the Load. And in particular, as we approach Memorial Day, to consider why you're there, why we have Memorial Day, and what the purpose is and then incorporate that into whatever you do, whatever you do to celebrate Memorial Day, incorporate that and memorialize those who have served and given their lives as a sacrifice for us, for our country. Absolutely. I, I, and really, it's something that I view as, a, as a, a true blessing and an opportunity to get a, a chance to participate in. Uh, you, a lot of guys like me have struggled, men and women have struggled for a long period of time to uh, figure out how to communicate what this organization uh, helps us communicate, which is uh, telling about the memories, sharing the things that we're, we ask the question, who are you carrying? Uh, you know, and, and it's, it, there's such a, there's been a disconnect really within the country uh, over, over this last couple of years or decades where, where there's been so much sacrifice. Uh, there've been, uh, it, and it's been concentrated into specific communities and it makes it hard to relate to, but this gives us a chance to tell their stories. Uh, like I said, I've got, I've got 34 names on my list that I actively remember and tell people about several, several of them are honored on that trail. Uh, my, my son's named after two of them. He knows he gets to read his, his namesakes memorials every year on the March. Wow. Uh, and, and having an opportunity to, uh, to share about them, whether it's classmates, whether it's, uh, guys from my, my unit in Iraq. Uh, in some cases, it's, it's people whose funerals I conducted when I was at Arlington Cemetery, uh, you know, or a childhood friend, all of them. Uh, it, it, giving the opportunity to share it, uh, it is, uh, it, it's life-giving uh, in something that we're honoring where somebody's life was taken. Do you have those names in front of you now, Brian? 
I do. I'll highlight uh, two in particular uh, that, I, that I've had storyboards along the trail. It would be fine with me if you want to highlight those two. If you want to just name off the 34, that's fine as well. Okay. Well, so the two in particular that I'll, that I'll tell you about, because they have, uh, they have storyboards on the trail. Sergeant Jack Taft Hennessy. Uh, so Sergeant Hennessy, uh, Jack was a childhood friend of mine. Uh, we, we grew up together. We played on the same soccer team. We were lifeguards together as kids. Uh, graduated high school together. Uh, he, he went off and enlisted uh, when I went off to the military academy. Uh, we talked before his deployment, and uh, before I made it out of school, uh, he was killed on October 1st, 2004 in Baghdad. Uh, it was, uh, he was the first friend that I lost uh, in, in, these, in these wars, uh, and that's where my son gets his first name from. My son's first name is Jack. Uh, so Jack's memorial is on that trail, uh, and it's it's an honor to get to to share about him. Uh, he was a he was a leader. He was a uh, he was a riot to be around. Uh, tons of life uh, in there. He was he was a life short, play hard kind of guy, uh, and, and embodied that right to the end. And and when he died, he died as a hero, leading uh, leading his soldiers. Uh, the second one that I'll, that I'll highlight specifically is First Lieutenant Christopher Gate. Uh, Chris died in, in July of 2010. Uh, he was three years behind me at school. Uh, so when I was a senior, he was a freshman, uh, which you don't normally get an opportunity to really interact a lot with uh, between the upperclassmen and the freshmen, at least not in a very uh, uh, deeply connected personal way uh, it, it, as far as the military academy and the training program that they go through. Uh, but Chris and I were able to form a, a, a friendship and a connection through uh, several church programs that were there. We taught Sunday school together. One of the absolute best men I've ever known in my life. Uh, he graduated sixth in his class. He was an infantry officer, and he died in Afghanistan. Uh, again, as a hero, he was on. A, they were on their downtime. Uh, they were resting on a fob, and uh, the wall on the fob uh, where they were in Kandahar was was partially breached. Uh, people were getting into the compound, and, and Chris was able to lead his guys and go stop the attack uh, enough for them to regain security. And, and in uh, small arms fire and RPGs, he was killed there leading his troops. Uh, but uh, And that's where my son gets his middle name from. Uh, so Jack Christopher is my son. Uh, and both of them have had memorials on the storyboard. Uh, last year, uh, Chris was one of the heroes of the day in the Midwest Relay. Uh, because uh, it kicked off near where he's buried at Fort Snelling National Cemetery in Minneapolis. And uh, having the opportunity to share them and why it's, uh, why it's impactful to me. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've wept with friends in front of the storyboards that are hanging on the, uh, on the side of the trail. Uh, but there just aren't natural ways to share uh, it in your day-to-day -day life like that. So, uh, th those are the two that I highlight most often, uh, you know, and I'm proud that they're hung on the trail. Uh, love to work through all of the others uh, it, over time and get more of them represented. Uh, the rest of them that are represented are, uh, are relatively even split between. I've got uh, 15 uh, you know, friends and, and uh, people that I knew from going through West Point, classmates, people a, a class or two ahead of me or behind me. Uh, the I honor and I remember every Memorial May. Uh, another group of about 15 uh, who were in my unit in Iraq that were killed while we were there. It works out as a uh, somber but beautiful synergy that uh, all of this takes place through Memorial May. Uh, May was the deadliest month of our deployment uh, by far. And uh, so 14 years ago, we were uh, right in the thick of it uh, in the middle of Baghdad. and. Uh, for a lot of us, we, you know, a lot of the guys that were in that unit, we, we kind of refer to May 19th as our own personal Memorial Day because we lost six guys that day. Uh, and so we'll, we'll share about them. Uh, I, I post on my social media all through the month of May uh, uh, each of these names and their stories, uh, pictures, uh, because it's not just a uh, it's not just a number. It's not just a number of casualties, but try and make it relatable. Understand that. You know, these men and women left uh, left families behind. They left children behind. They left brothers and sisters and parents. Uh, they left a, a memory that should be honored and and, and remembered. Yes. Um, 
you know, the others, a uh, couple of guys I served with in the, in the old guard, uh, or was connected with in the old guard. Uh, two of them are, are actually for funerals that I conducted. One of them, we were at West Point at the same time. Uh, he was killed on active duty. Uh, he was called back to active duty. Actually, he'd gotten out of the military and came back. Uh, came back in. Was called back in. Uh, conducted his funeral. I didn't know him at school, uh, but was was honored to have a chance to uh, help lay him to rest at Arlington. Another one, uh, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting story. The first active duty KIA funeral that I performed at Arlington was actually a, a group burial from World War II. Uh, it was a plane that had gone down uh, during the war, never been recovered, presumed dead. Uh, they'd done the funeral way back, way back when, uh, and somebody uh, uncovered some of the uh, remains of the wreckage, and they were able to, to turn up and recover uh, the, the casualties, re- recover the, uh, the fallen service members, and, and bring them back, and we were able to conduct they were still entitled to exactly the same honors as if they died today in Iraq or Afghanistan or, or it, you know, in a contemporary war. Uh, so we got them, we brought them back and we were able to uh, conduct their funeral uh, in Arlington back in, in, in 2008. Uh, so one of those, one of those names, uh, First Lieutenant uh, Pascal, he is, uh, he's also honored on the trail because I was able to put in a storyboard for him. Uh, so I, I've got a I've got a mix of people from from a number of walks of life uh, from all over the country, uh, coast to coast. People I've interacted with in different ways, and they've all they've all impacted me. Uh, and I was having this conversation with a friend this week uh, that uh, telling the story about their lives and this time, so their deaths were so impactful to me, and wanting to share and connect with other people uh, so that they understand. Uh, and, and then use that as a motivation for me to just go deeper with people, uh, because I, you know, in, in a way, I can honor their memory by uh, not missing another opportunity to make their li- make somebody's lives be more impactful on me uh, the way that these guys' deaths have been for me. Uh, so it, it, a lot of lot of amazing stories uh, it, it, that you could go into detail on on these. Uh, on these names on my list, I mean, some fantastic, uh, some fantastic human beings uh, who were, uh, you know, truly, truly the best of the best, uh, and were taken from us too early. Uh, heroes that inspired their soldiers and led them well. Uh, you've got people who who gave back to their communities and served selflessly. Uh, you've got you've got people with inspirational stories, an Olympic level athlete or uh, you know, people who, who achieved exceptional things in, a, in an all too short life. Um, all of them should be honored and remembered. Absolutely. Do y'all recognize service members who took their lives? We do. Um, and first responders as well. We do. We're really, our 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 focus is service connected loss. Okay. Uh, so if. Uh, if that's the contributing factor, uh, then you know absolutely. And, and and who are we to say that it's not? Uh, absolutely, uh, we we honor those who who've taken their lives. It's such a profound and pervasive struggle that so many people deal with the the, the loads that they carry uh, just internally, uh, dealing with these memories uh, and and maybe not having an outlet like carry the load or the type of support that you get from the organizations that carry the load supports. Uh, 22 Kill uh, is one of the nonprofit partners that that is their primary focus is preventing that from happening in veterans, uh, preventing preventing veteran suicide, uh, giving them hope and purpose and community and connection. And that's that's what the community aspect of this event does so beautifully. Uh, you know, I'll tell a brief story on on connection. Uh, so. I told you about Jack Hennessy, uh, who was, he's got a storyboard on the trail. Uh, at the end of each of the marches, uh, they take down all the storyboards and they, they bring them in uh, and they have a closing ceremony. And at the closing ceremony, uh, volunteers line up and you can carry in uh, a memorial storyboard. So they parade all of them in for the end of the event. Uh, so we camped out because we wanted to make sure that we got Jack's storyboard and we got Chris's storyboard. 
so I, I carried one, my son carried one, and, and we wanted to carry him into the end. And we were standing there holding these storyboards, waiting for the, the parade into the closing ceremony to start. Guy walks by, points at the story, or at Jack's storyboard, goes, huh, I knew him. And then he was starting to keep walking, like, whoa, whoa, whoa what, do you, what do you mean you knew him? We got into uh, exchanging his story. Uh, he got to know him through basic training and was in his unit in Iraq with him when he died, uh, when he was killed. And uh, I got to tell the story of, of growing up with him, and we've been able to connect repeatedly. We see, look forward to seeing each other out on the trail every year uh, since then. And then he introduced me to a couple other guys that knew Jack as well. So by creating this community, you know, you're, you're, you're sharing their stories, uh, you're keeping their memories alive, you're honoring them, but then you're also connecting with other people who are in the same boat you're in, right? You're in the same, in the same position. Um, and, and that, that's healing to know that you're not alone, uh, in, in some of these struggles that, that people go through, uh, carrying these memories and not having anybody to help shoulder it with them. The event by itself just creates, uh, creates opportunities like that for, uh, for connection, for, for communal healing. Well, I was talking to him this morning, Christopher Lowrance. He's a retired police officer from Gaston County Police Department in North Carolina. He's currently riding 4,300 miles on his bicycle across the country. He is at the border of Idaho and Montana as we speak, and he's riding to bring awareness to first responder suicide law enforcement first responder suicide and bring awareness to an organization called blue help which keeps track of those who have taken their lives in law enforcement and also first responder community as well that's fantastic i have a i have a classmate uh from from west point right now not involved with uh with carry the load but he's walking 1800 miles right now to do the same thing uh he's stopping at speaking engagements across the country uh, moving moving through the southeast uh, right now to uh, raise awareness for the struggles with PTSD that people have. People aren't alone. Uh, there's other people going through the same thing, but there's there's support uh, and a, a community that loves them out there that wants to support them and wants to rally around them. If you've got the list in front of you, we'll let you call out the list if you'd like to do that. Sounds good. I'd mentioned before my, my two friends, uh, Sergeant Jack Hennessy, and First Lieutenant Christopher Gakey, uh, they're honored on the trail. Uh, along with them, uh, in, in my other list of names, the people that I, I remember uh, every year, Captain John Ryan Dennison. Uh, Dennison was uh, a year ahead of me at West Point, and he was killed in Iraq. Uh, he's buried in Section 60 in Arlington Cemetery. I was had the uh, privilege of getting to visit his, his grave often uh, while I was working there. I also remember Sergeant Christopher Strasso. He was a member of our battalion. He was killed uh, in Baghdad uh, in December of 2006. Specialist uh, Andrew Weiss, Andy Weiss, who was uh, another member of my battalion, he was killed uh, by an IED uh, in May of 2007 in, in Baghdad. And then uh, Staff Sergeant Christopher Hamlin was another member of my battalion that was killed the next day uh, on May 4th of uh, 2007. And then the following day, uh, after after Sergeant Hamlin was uh, killed, PFC Larry Isaiah Guyton uh, died uh, from our uh, battalion uh, on May 5th of 2007 uh, in Iraq uh, from the, the same IED attack. Uh, he, he held on a little bit longer uh, on, <laughs> like I said, it was a bad month for our battalion, uh, on May 6th uh, in 2007. Uh, Staff Sergeant Chris Kiernan uh, was killed uh, as well and by small arms fire in Baghdad, another member of our battalion uh, that we lost that day. Uh, a classmate that I remember uh, each year, uh, Second Lieutenant Emily Perez, uh, she she graduated with me. She was killed on September 12, 2006 by an IED attack in Iraq. Uh, she was the first member of our class that was killed in combat, uh, and she's was just a, a, a joyful, uh, incredibly impressive uh, woman. Uh, she was first member of our class to die in combat. She was the first female minority cadet brigade commander uh, or command sergeant major at West Point. And she was the first uh, female West Point graduate to die in the Iraq war. Uh, just a 
a joy to be around uh, a light to people and uh, and taken too early. Uh, I remember uh, Colonel Theodore West Husing. He was a professor that I worked with uh, at West Point when I was when I was there as a cadet, a student, and he was killed in Baghdad in 2005. Uh, in June of 2005, uh, I remember First Lieutenant Laura Walker. Uh, she was two years ahead of me at West Point. Uh, she was uh, the first female West Point graduate to be killed in combat. Uh, the class of 1980 was the first year that they had females uh, as part of the West Point class. Uh, and so it, in in the war's sense, uh, she has that unfortunate distinction. Uh, she was an Olympic-level athlete, uh, and her uh, she had a, a, a brother that was a classmate of mine. Um, I remember Specialist Donald Young, who was a member of my battalion, killed in uh, August 8, 2007. Uh, he was the last casualty of our deployment before we went home, uh, killed by an IED. Another classmate of mine is uh, First Lieutenant Philip Neal. Uh, Phil was a classmate of mine, uh, killed in April of 2007 uh, on Easter Sunday, uh, from wounds from enemy grenades in Iraq. Uh, got to know him uh, through church activities and was just a, a, a kind, compassionate leader. Uh, also another classmate, uh, Captain Matt Ferrara. Uh, he was uh, killed in November of 2007 uh, during a small arms ambush in Afghanistan, uh, and it was supposed to be his final patrol before moving to a new role. Uh, and uh, all, all of his brothers have served and deployed as well. Uh, another classmate, uh, First Lieutenant Jacob Fritz, uh, he was a he was a, a classmate of mine that I got to know through some cadet clubs uh, at school and was killed in January. Uh, 2007, uh, by a, a group of insurgents uh, and firearms in uh, in Iraq. Uh, Sergeant Matthew Aplon uh, was a member of my battalion in Iraq. He was killed in February of 2007. Uh, he was shot on a patrol. It was his second deployment to Iraq. Uh, First Lieutenant Neil Shank was another classmate of mine uh, that uh, died while he was deployed to Baghdad uh, and in March of 2007. Uh, First Lieutenant Jonathan Eads, another classmate of mine, was killed by an IED in Baghdad uh, in uh, August of 2007. The uh, Sergeant Louis Festuca was uh, in the Old Guard with me, the unit, the Honor Guard that serves at Arlington National Cemetery. After he left that assignment, he was uh, part of the 173rd Airborne, which is based out of uh, Vicenza, Italy. He deployed from there and was uh, killed by an IED in eastern Afghanistan in July of 2010. The uh, Another classmate, First Lieutenant Thomas Martin, uh, was killed uh, while he was on patrol uh, in Iraq in October of 2007. The A, a group that we usually talk about, uh, the community from our battalion, uh, we re- remember together, uh, we all lost on, on May 19th in, in 2007. Uh, Sergeant uh, Gene Medellin, uh, he was uh, he was one of these six men who, was, who were all in the same IED attack, along with Specialist David Beerley, uh, PFC Travis Hazlitt, uh, Staff Sergeant Christopher Moore, uh, PFC Alex Varela, uh, and Specialist Joseph Gilmore, uh, who was their, their medic. Uh, massive IED explosion uh, took all of them from us very quickly. Uh, and then on the same day, uh, every year when I, when I do the posts, I also post about Sergeant Hennessy, about my friend Jack, because uh, uh, that May 19th would, uh, was his birthday as well. So uh, we just, uh, we just you know, wished him a happy heavenly birthday here uh, a couple days ago. Uh, First Lieutenant Tim Cunningham was a year behind me at school. I got to know through church activities at, at West Point and, uh, he died during a patrol in Iraq uh, near Baghdad in April of 2008. Uh, mentioned before about First Lieutenant Raymond Pascal, uh, who was his uh, flight crew was recovered uh, after they'd gone down in World War II, and we had the opportunity to uh, conduct their funeral in Arlington. So he was he was killed in, in uh, July of 1944, uh, but we still get a chance to honor and remember him all the same. 
uh, Captain Adam Snyder, another classmate of mine, uh, died in December of 2007 in Iraq uh, after an IED attack. Another classmate, Captain Scott Pace, uh, was uh, killed along with one other soldier during a helicopter crash. Uh, he was an uh, aviator, uh, and he was killed in Afghanistan after they were uh, hit by a Taliban gunfire. Uh, Specialist Robert Volker was a member of our battalion and uh, killed by an IED in Baghdad in December of 2006. Corporal Mark Ryan uh, Kagoya was uh, another member of our battalion, and he he died on May 24th, 2007, uh, from an earlier IED blast that uh, killed some of our uh, other battalion members uh, earlier in the month uh, and died from the wounds sustained in that IED attack. Made it made it a little bit further. We had we had hope he was going to make it through, uh, and then ultimately uh, died of those in- injuries. Uh, First Lieutenant Garrison Avery, uh, a year ahead of me at West Point, was hit by an IED in Baghdad. Uh, Captain Brian Bunting uh, was the uh, was the officer I mentioned that uh, I didn't know him at school, even though we'd overlapped there for a year. He was three years ahead of me, uh, but I, I had the I had the privilege of conducting his funeral uh, at Arlington Cemetery uh, when I was there with the old card. Typically, uh, I, I end my posts each year uh, when I when I share about the names just before Memorial Day itself with uh, talking about uh, First Lieutenant Chris Gakey, who, who I already mentioned, uh, so my, my son's middle namesake. Uh, and so that, that's that's how I, I typically round off the names that I share uh, as I... Uh, tell people about carry the load and I tell people about uh, each of those people, each of their memories, uh, share anecdotes, stories, invite other people to, to share the same uh, and, uh, and, and use it to point them to, Hey, if you're, if you're looking for a place to connect with people who are trying to share the same sort of thing uh, that, that I am, uh, that we are together, uh, carry the load is the perfect place to do it. Absolutely. And Brian, I'm glad that, we had the opportunity for you to share the names of those that you carry today. I appreciate you being able to share that list with me. Thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to do it. Uh, like I mentioned before, if you register for the march, you get your own personal page associated there that you can use to share the story, share fundraising. And I, I don't have all the names uh, listed on my on my personal page. There, I do have uh, I do have all their pictures on the page. And w- working through over time to get more and more of them added to the memorial story boards, so they could be seen on the uh, online tribute wall that Carry the Load publishes, which is a, a great way to read about more stories as well. If you can't make it to the march, uh, there's uh, we, we have our we have our memorials all published online as well. So all the ones that have been submitted are going to be hung at the march. Uh, you can see their pictures, read their stories, the things that their loved ones have submitted. Uh, and, and wanted to share and honor their memory. Uh, so you can look at those online and Carrie Load shares, uh, shares those, uh, particularly throughout Memorial May, but then on, on kind of key dates throughout the year as well. Uh, so their social media would be a great one to follow for a lot of this. Folks, go to carrytheload.org, check out their website, find out more information about Carry the Load. Also find them on social media at Carry the Load, L O A D, Carry the Load. And Brian Larson, it's been a real pleasure to have you here on the Mark White Show as an ambassador of Carry the Load. Thank you, Mark. I mean, we appreciate the opportunity to share about it. Uh, this is a, it's such a blessing to be part of this organization that's given me a lot. And, and the opportunity to tell others about it, uh, it is, uh, it, it's exactly what we're about. We're wanting people to know more uh, about this and connect with it and understand uh, that you're not the only one out there carrying something. You connect with it you can recognize what memorial day is about and, uh if nothing else just ask people who they're carrying uh, and and learn a little bit more about the significance of the sacrifice well again we appreciate you being able to join us brian and when we look towards memorial day start begin to think about those who have sacrificed for us and think about it during your event i hope that you'll do that if you're listening right now that you will incorporate that into your memorial day plans When we come back, we're going to have Julianne Hansen with Julianne Hansen Fine Art and Pottery in Prattville, Alabama to talk about the Alabama Poppy Project 2021. I hope you'll stick with us. You are listening to The Mark White Show, and I'm your host, Mark White. 
like hickory smoked ribs that fall apart at the slightest pull or barbecue shoulders that are so slow smoked each tender bite melts in your mouth then you are going to love baby jack's barbecue baby jack's barbecue in bartlett and arlington try the barbecue chicken beef brisket sandwich barbecue potato it is huge or the baby jack trio pork turkey or beef brisket sliders you like wet ribs they like dry ribs get one slab that has them both catering baby jack's can feed a family or an army drive in drive through order online or come in and set them in baby jack's barbecue in bartlett at highway 70 in appling or in arlington at highway 70 just a block west of 385 He's got a cold. Nothing to worry about. Just need a couple of stitches. Your COVID rapid test is negative. Oh boy, x-ray shows it's broken. Trust Trinity Medical Care when you need urgent care or routine medical care. Walk-ins are welcome or let Trinity help you virtually with telemedicine. Visit trinity-medicalcare.com for more information and follow them on Facebook. Trinity Medical Care, where your care comes first. Located on Governor's Drive in South Parkway. Hello, my name is Christian Martinez. I'm a rising senior at Athens Bible School. My school is great because of the wonderful environment in which students can grow and flourish. We have great academics that include the university preparatory diploma and dual enrollment courses that lead to an associate's degree before high school graduation. All my teachers and the school's employees are Christians who are devoted to the welfare of students. We have an excellent student body, competitive sports program, and study the Bible first thing every day. It's a great place. Please consider joining us at ABS next year, or give that special child in your life the great opportunity I have. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. Losing a loved one is hard, but losing a loved one and not having an estate plan is even harder. Attorney Harlan Mitchell witnessed what not having an estate plan can do to families and decided to use his experience to do something about it. I encourage you to go to BamaEstatePlanning.com or give Harlan Mitchell a call at 256-216-9884. Again, that website is BamaEstatePlanning.com. Let Harlan Mitchell help you with estate planning. Do it for those you love and do it today. Whether you're new to aviation or an experienced pilot looking to advance your skills, Go Vertical Aviation has you covered. With an excellent learning atmosphere and a staff committed to excellence in education, Go Vertical Aviation will customize a learning program just for you. For more information, go to GoVerticalAviation.com or call 256-412-5226. Be sure to follow Go Vertical Aviation on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Don't just go. Go Vertical. Boutique Air in Muscle Shoals, Alabama offers direct flights to Atlanta, Nashville, and Pensacola. Boutique Air service runs twice daily, seven days a week, with fares starting at $59. Follow Boutique Air Muscle Shoals on Facebook at Boutique Air MSL and book your flight through BoutiqueAir.com. Boutique Air. Where you can fly private for the cost of commercial. Red and yellow and pink and green, pop went orange and blue. I can sing rainbow, sing rainbow to you. Listen to your eyes, listen to your eyes. You can sing rainbow, sing rainbow, sing along with me. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange. Welcome back to the Saturday edition of the Mark White Show. I am your host, Mark White, and right now we are in the Mary Faye Hedrick Good Deed segment. And I have my friend Julianne Hansen. I know her through tourism, specifically Point Mallard in Decatur, Alabama, as I was in tourism myself. And now we are doing our own thing. We are still interested in 
people, places, and things and bringing people to those places to be able to enjoy what we have to offer, and more specifically in Prattville, Alabama, coming up. Welcome to the Mark White Show, Julianne. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. We were talking about how we may not be in the tourism industry, but we still are. Um, we still are. You know, we're still talking about bringing people into specific areas to do certain things, and and uh, without even realizing it, we are affecting tourism and and allowing people to travel to places and see things that they normally wouldn't have seen if we hadn't have heard it here. Absolutely. And we just finished up two segments with Brian Larson, who served in our military and is now an ambassador for Carry the Load as we talk about Memorial Day activities. And as Brian mentioned in the last two segments, we want to focus our energy and put our interest in the right place when it comes to Memorial Day. I know that we have a lot of different activities that we do that might involve cooking out or going to be with family and friends, but to not forget what Memorial Day is about. That's exactly right. You know, I think a lot of times it's very interesting how a lot of people, even today, have a hard time differentiating between Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and they can't kind of figure out which one means what versus, or, or Labor Day. And we're, you know, the whole focus for us about Memorial Day is exactly that. It is a memorial for those who have served and have given their lives. Um, and in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice of, of uh, dying in the in the line of duty. And, and those are things that we really want to focus on. And it really doesn't matter what their job was in the military or how they passed. Um, the focus is that they served. Absolutely. And speaking of service, you have a special loved one that you have dedicated your pottery business to the effort that you have in honor of Kyle, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, he is, uh, my stepson, my, my husband's, uh, youngest child. And, um, you know, and we, you know, we call it, there are no steps in the family. So, you know, he's our son and, and he passed away very suddenly in, um, February of 2017. And after he passed away, I was just really struggling trying to figure out how to cope with my grief. There just was it was just really, really a difficult, difficult time. And, and at that point in time, um, decided to open up a pottery business. Never thought I'd ever do anything like that. And um, it wasn't until last year that I wanted to do something that really focused on um, celebrating the life of these people who have, have lived and served and done their part. And I wanted to do it in a different kind of way. Going to a cemetery is, is, is a wonderful way to honor these individuals. But at the same time, it can actually trigger people who are having emotional um, difficulty trying to cope with the passing of a loved one. This is a little bit different. And it's, it's actually the Alabama Poppy Project. is uh, We have made this year 2021 handmade ceramic poppies that will be placed out in historic downtown Prattville. Um, and uh, it will be an outdoor art exhibit that focuses on the original meaning of the poppy as a symbol of remembrance for those who have served. Um, and it, it focuses around uh, the poem written by John McCrae in Flanders Field. And he wrote that poem uh, back in 1915. And that was something that became almost an international representation of memorial for those who have served. So what I decided to do was kind of take it another step just to kind of, I don't know, just kind of beautify our own little corner of the world and at the same time recognize those who have served. And so having these 2,000 poppies out in the field um, right next to the Daniel Pratt Historic Gin Shop and uh, we have this beautiful little spillway dam area. And the, so the water is around us and then we hear the beautiful white noise and and then these beautiful red poppies in a, in a green field. It's just wonderful. But one step further from that, individuals can sponsor a poppy in the name of someone who had served in the military and is no longer living. And when they do that, we write their name in gold on a white ribbon and affix that to a poppy. And so by the end of the exhibit, we hope that all of the poppies all have white ribbons flowing in the wind. And that represents their legacy that continues on. They, they haven't 
left this earth because there's so much of their memory and their family and all that they did still waving and flying free in, in our lives and in our memories. And so we just want to continue making um, this a focus of positive, beautiful um, things that we can, it doesn't always have to be depressing. And um, we, we want it to be educational. We want it to be inspirational. We want it to be motivational. But And it's all surrounding an artistic exhibit. That sounds great. And in the last segment, Julianne, Brian called off 34 names of men and women that he had served with through West Point when he was in school and then also in mm -hmm. the Middle East. And he was able to name off those 34 names. And I did want to make sure that we honored Captain Kyle Hansen during this segment. He was an Eagle Scout and he served in yes. the Air Force upon graduation. He was an accomplished pilot flying the yes. T-6, the T-1, and the C-17 Globemaster to locations around the world. But he was known as a selfless servant to his family, his friends, and all those people he came in contact with. So I wanted to make sure that I spent enough time on honoring uh, Captain Kyle Hansen on this segment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. He really was a tremendous individual. And as we think about this event and people who want to come to Prattville, to be able to enjoy this together because as we honor people and you mentioned it, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about going to a cemetery and I've done it uh, too many times, probably. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, Kyle is buried at the Alabama national cemetery in Montevallo and it is a beautiful, beautiful place. I, I always call it, you know, the Arlington of Alabama. When you go to these different services, they, they just really do strike a, a tone in your heart. And depending on where you are that day or that minute, um, you just don't really know how it's going to affect you. And, and most of the time, I'm just an absolute mess. And um, begin, at the beginning of uh, 2020, I just I told my husband, I said, I just don't know that I can do it again. But let's do something positive. Let's do something different. And that's when and that's when COVID kind of shut everything down. And what we didn't realize was last year, almost every single Memorial Day event was canceled because it was considered a large gathering. Yes. Well, with ours, we were able to keep social distancing. It was out in the open. There was no ceremony. There was no service. It was just open and allowed people to just walk through at their leisure, social distance, and we were the only ones that were really doing anything. This year, you know, obviously things are starting to, uh, you know, open back up again, but we, we wanted something that was more I don't want to say more uplifting, just different, a different way to honor these individuals. And and one of the other things that's just so different about this particular exhibit and this event is that, A, it's interactive, um, and we have people telling their stories, the stories about their father, their uncle, their brother. We have individuals that are represented here that goes everything from killed in action in World War one to um, killed in action recently to um, something that's very, uh, very, very close to us is, is suicide, Where whether it is veteran suicide or active duty suicide. These are very real issues that we need to be talking about and addressing. And all those people, whether however they pass, um, deserve that poppy. They deserve that moment where people can talk about them and honor them in that way. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I asked carry the load. Did they recognize those who had taken their lives, whether they be law enforcement or military? And they certainly do. And so their names are included through carry the load as well. And I appreciated that. And as we speak, Christopher Lowrance, he is a retired police officer from the Gaston County Police Department in North Carolina. He's riding his bicycle 4,300 miles across the country to bring awareness to first responder suicide. And then I had Van Booth, who walked across the country from coast to coast to bring awareness to PTSD and military suicide as well. So this has been a subject that I want to make sure that those who served in whatever capacity are honored and recognized because you and I both know that there's still a stigma to that. And Absolutely. while, say, a police officer can be killed in the line of duty, they're recognized, there are benefits to that. If an officer takes his life, there is a different treatment of that officer, and mm -hmm. it, it's the same for military as well. And so we want to try to 
clear out that stigma and say, look, these people served. It took its toll on them. Whatever reason they took their life, we want to remember them. We want to honor them and recognize them. There's no reason to not honor them in the way that we should. And I will say that that is how Kyle passed. And so that is one of those situations where when they gave us, we went in to have our first meeting with Mortuary Affairs and they handed us gold stars. And after we were dealing with a lot of the issues and everything, I I stopped and I, I told him, I said, you're treating Kyle like he was killed in action or that he w- was you know, killed in the line of duty. And he said to us, he was. Wow. Because they take responsibility and they, yes. they're understanding that you can't predict this. You can't, you know, and, and again, I, through all of the things that I do, I want to bring awareness that, um, you know, uh, the suicide prevention programs and things like that um, need some work. They really do need some work because it's on the rise. So regardless of whether they're active duty or retired or, you know, wherever they are, they have served. And um, and these wounds are not visible. They're not like an individual who had something that, um, you know, an arm or a, a leg that is very clearly injured or missing. This is not something that you can see. And those unseen wounds are the things we really need to address. So I'm very grateful for anyone doing anything that brings awareness to this. And I'm so glad that Julianne Hansen Fine Art and Pottery is dedicated to the memory of Captain Kyle Hansen and keeping his name alive because I think that's very important. And as we talk about the Alabama Poppy Project 2021, there are so many people out there who simply want to hear the name of the person they love. They want their name to not be forgotten. They want to honor and they want to recognize. And by putting on these events, it gives them a place where they can have their name said, they can have their service acknowledged. And I know that that means so much to so many people who care and love these people so dearly and don't want them to be forgotten. Absolutely. As part of that, I'm glad you mentioned that because as part of that in the Alabama Poppy Project website, which is alabamapoppyproject.com, if individuals choose to sponsor a poppy, they can dedicate it towards an individual who, like I said before, served in the military and is no longer living, but they also can dedicate, um, they have a page that's included in this sponsorship that that person can, they can give us a photograph, they can give us a biography, they can tell us something about them. That's their page. That's their, that's their person's page and they can share that worldwide because it's theirs and it gives them an opportunity to you know, to tell their story or just to talk about them or just to post their picture on there. And it isn't going to go away in some sort of news feed that's that's yesterday's news, you know, on social media. This is something that's theirs and they get to keep it and share it and know that, you know, that, that they were honored and remembered. They are special. They are important to all of us. It's just we don't know their story. So now it's the family's opportunity or the friends or, or you know, anybody that they served with. We have several people that, are, um, that have been uh, honored by uh, people that they served with decades ago. And they just, you know, they, it was somebody that they lost in combat or somebody lost, they lost touch with, but they were able to give us a photograph and, and tell us about them. And now they have their own special page. And, um, and all of that is included in a poppy sponsorship, and it's just $45 to do that. But you, it doesn't cost anything to come to the exhibit. You can walk through it um, all day and all night. And let me tell you, the, the lighting at that particular location is so beautiful. At all different times of day, it makes the exhibit look completely different. And so, but, but remembering these individuals is so important. I'm so glad you mentioned that because we always want these people to understand that though they are gone, they are not forgotten. Absolutely. And if people want to sponsor one of these poppies, how do they do that, Julianne? All they have to do is visit alabamapoppyproject.com and then click sponsor a poppy. It's super simple. And then once they sponsor a poppy, we will contact them on how to send us the information of their um, individual and how to send us a photograph so that we can upload it to, um, to the website. But it's very simple to do and they can sponsor as many as they like. And um, 
uh, a portion of the proceeds of every poppy sponsorship goes to several different organizations that either support the memory of our fallen or the families that they've left behind. And to make this easy for people, when May 30th arrives at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, is it best for them to find their way via GPS to 173 West Main Street as a starting point? Um, yes, actually, it's, it's there's actually no official address for the right. field that we're <laughs> at, but all they have to do is just, go, you know, um, just come straight down Main Street and, and it's right around the corner from my gallery and um, which is on court at uh, the the location's on Court Street in historic downtown Prattville, but all you have to do is just just go straight down Main Street and uh, and make a right, and you'll run right into it. Literally, it's 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 right there, and it is so exciting to be able to know. Now, the event goes one entire week, so the evening of Sunday, May thirtieth, at between six and seven fifteen, people can come and tie the ribbons onto the poppies themselves. Then at seven thirty, we will render taps. At that point, we will have um, a projection of different military type images, including the honorees that have had poppy sponsored in their name, um, will be projected up on the giant gin shop, the old gin shop building um, across the creek. And that will go until midnight every night of the exhibit. And then we will close the exhibit um, at sundown on Saturday, um, uh, June the 5th. So, and then the poppies that are sponsored belong to those people. So they can either choose to come pick them up, we can ship them to them, or they can choose to donate them back to the event. I'm so glad that we could connect in this way, Julianne. I like this. I Me like too. I like this event and I like what it's doing for people. I know it's going to make a lot of people feel really good as we approach Memorial Day and we start to think about what Memorial Day really means. And I want people to visit the Alabama Poppy Project 2021. I'm going to share the event post on the Mark White Show so people will have more details about it. They'll have the dates in front of them, the location in front of them, and be able to connect with Julianne Hansen Fine Art and Pottery as well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you, Julianne Hansen, for joining me here on the Mark White Show today. It's been my pleasure. Folks, when we come back, we're going to have a brand new episode of Kyla's Corner with Kyla Carter as she celebrates the fact that school is out. (laughs) I know for a lot of kids, including my daughter, Cora, who won the Gummy Bear Award in her class. So congratulations to Cora on the Gummy Bear Award, which means she's a lovable, sweet little girl. And I knew she was, and I'm so glad that she was recognized for that. But Kyla is going to talk about what we can do through the summer as young people, what you can do through the summer as a young person moving forward. So I hope you'll stick with us. You're listening to The Mark White Show, and I'm your host, Mark White. these are my kind of people. Hi, everybody. This is DJ Thomas. You know, raindrops may be falling on your head, but on Kyla's Corner, she's living life sunny side up. Nothing seems to fit. I'm not your average puzzle piece. I don't give in or give up. I'll always know that I'm enough. I'm not your average puzzle piece. Welcome to Kyla's Corner. I'm Kyla Carter, and I hope to inspire you to spread positivity, happiness, and kindness through these segments. I live my life sunny side up, and I hope you can too. The school year is finally coming to an end. The summer months will be filled with fun, family, barbecues, and swimming. Though the coronavirus is still lurking, things are finally starting to get back to normal. We can see our friends and family and really enjoy our summer this year. However, although summer will be great for many of us, 
we must not forget about others who may still be suffering and need our help. Some of us will be outside soaking in the sunshine, while others will be in hospital rooms. There are so many things you can do within your community and for the environment to help out this summer. You will now have more time for yourself and even more time to help others. I enjoy helping to keep our environment clean and safe. I spend most of my summer at the beach, and while there, I will help clean up the litter while collecting and recycling any cans or water bottles I find. I like to invite friends and family to help out as well. You can even make it a game and see who can pick up the most trash. The winner gets a free ice cream bought by their friends. Or Starbucks. <laughs> I love the idea of a bake sale or an old-fashioned lemonade stand or even donating your time or talent to an event that is planned to help raise money for a charity that is important to you, or maybe even a local business that has been struggling to survive during COVID. I often sing at charity events to help raise money for animal rights, childhood cancer, COVID research, and the Actors Fund. It is important as you live your life sunny side up to always think of others that may need your love and light. A really easy and loving gesture that will put a smile on someone's face is to make cards for children and adults in hospitals with positive messages of hope and encouragement. Think about others as you are celebrating life and make a difference in as many lives as you can. Brighten someone's day unexpectedly. Something so simple for you can actually be something of great importance and healing for someone else. There are so many ways that you can contribute to your community this summer. There are so many ways to inspire, touch someone's heart, and help heal our environment and the others around us. I encourage you all to think about ways that you can help others. There is always someone less fortunate than you that would love a helping hand and a loving smile. Show kindness, make a difference, and live your life, as I do, sunny side up. I'm Kyla Carter, and you're listening to The Mark White Show. Stay unique and find a way to make a difference that doesn't just impact you, but impacts others around you. Welcome to the Make a Difference Minute replay, where we play Make a Difference Minutes from the past week. Welcome to another edition of the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show, where we're sharing stories to encourage and inspire. Experience the difference at Athens Bible School. The vision and purpose is to provide each student a quality education in a Christ-centered environment to develop the whole person spiritually, mentally, physically, and socially in safe and supportive surroundings. The Saul Biblical Foundation permeates learning and culture in the classrooms and every extracurricular activity. This is the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show. On this Make a Difference Minute, I have Val D'Antonio to share about Team Emma and her daughter's journey with acute flaccid myelitis. Back in 2018, she was a perfectly healthy, athletic little girl, and out of nowhere, she became paralyzed basically from the neck down. After numerous tests and procedures and misdiagnoses, they decided they were able to conclude that she had acute flaccid myelitis, which is so rare, it affects one in a million children. And the way that it affected her, it was one out of those one in a million children because it affected both the gray and white matter in her brain. Through extensive rehabilitation and physical therapy, she was able to recover about 90% of her movement in her entire body except her left leg. Her left leg is still completely flaccid and she is unable to move it, but she still is doing physical therapy every day and all different kinds of treatments and electrical skin and we're hopeful that sooner than later she'll be back to where she needs to be. There is a machine that she uses in therapy and it allows her to be on a harness and then still utilize a treadmill so that she gets the mechanics and the body of walking since she can't walk. It is not covered by insurance. It is not something, unfortunately, that we can afford at this time. So we're hopeful. We've got some t-shirts for sale. We've got some bracelets for sale with uh, Team Emma because she is our wonder girl. Her Facebook page is Team 
Emma Wonder Girl with no spaces in between. And if you put in hashtag our AFM Wonder Girl, that should bring you to her page as well. Be sure to follow The Mark White Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Welcome to another edition of the Make a Difference Minute from The Mark White Show, where we're sharing stories to encourage and inspire. Would you like enhanced energy, better moods, less fatigue, help with allergies, better sleep, mental clarity, or just want improvement of your overall immune health and well-being? Do you need to recover from intense activities, workouts, or sports? Then IV therapy at the Drip Factor inside Trinity Medical Center is right for you. Our IV drips are filled with nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that will help your body replenish, restore, and achieve your wellness goals. For more information, visit trinity-medicalcare.com and schedule your appointment today at Trinity Medical Center, located at 500 Governor's drive this is the make a difference minute from the mark white show on this make a difference minute i have university of north alabama graduate and baseball player reed homan reed is the most recent recipient of the bob stevenson award that was definitely an honor it was an award voted by the coaches and the teammates basically for achievements on and off the field it was really cool to me just seeing who had won it before me brian Klontz, and also peyton sockwell who was the shortstop a few years back he kind of peyton sockwell took me under his wing and I remember seeing him win it, and it was just, it was kind of full circle when I won it, just to kind of follow in his footsteps. I would, first, I got to give credit to the guys that came before me, as I mentioned, Peyton Sockwell, Bryant Clunch, guys like that. They were really set an example for me early when I got here, just of how to be on time, how to do things right. My dad grew up here, and I always heard stories about the legendary Coach Wayne and obviously the predecessor Coach Keen, and I've always heard great things about them. That was definitely confirmed. They're just really good coaches, really good hearts, and I just really enjoyed it here. My grandfather, grandmother, Dennis and Charlotte, they're both from here. And I've always heard great things about UNA and them being close to here. And it's not too far from my hometown of Athens. It seems like a perfect fit for me. I'm just glad I'm going to have an opportunity to come back one more year and hopefully just keep the strides going and keep the positive direction that we're, that we're headed in. And it, it appears like we're, we're going in the right direction. Athletes right now who are coming out of high school, what suggestions would you have for them thinking back to when you went from Madison Academy to UNA some things that might be helpful for young people. First off, I would say don't overthink it. I remember my freshman year, I was fortunate enough to see some playing time, and I remember how the stage is obviously it's a lot more fast-paced than college. Enjoy it while you're there. Don't overthink it. Freshman year, it kind of felt overwhelming at some point, but looking back at it, you just need to be patient and just enjoy your time. Just don't get nervous. You're going to have four more years. Just enjoy it while you can. Be sure to follow The Mark White Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Welcome to another edition of the Make a Difference Minute from The Mark White Show, where we're sharing stories to encourage and inspire. Mr. Cecil Batchelor is the one that started this business as Dependable Service Center. And even though now it's Green's Dependable Hardware and we're a true value store, our tagline is still your Dependable Service Center. We've tried to keep that alive for all these years. Mr. Batchelor really started a good business. We're really excited to be carrying on a long-standing tradition. It's the oldest retail store in the city of Russell. We're Green's Dependable Hardware, 15220A, Highway 43 in Russellville. Alabama. We're right behind McDonald's or right across the street from the hospital. Number is 256-331-0123. The Dependable Service Center. This is the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show. On this Make a Difference Minute, I have Brenda Winter and Francis Andrews with the John Wade Kyes Daughters of the American Revolution chapter. As we highlight ancestry research and lineage organizations. What was it that interested you in becoming part of the Daughters of the American Revolution? I'm glad you asked. It was my little granddaughter, Cassidy, who was three years old, and she kept asking me, who else? And I said, I don't know who else. Then one day she kept asking me, I mean, like for like six months, she'd say, who else? And I said, I'm going to find out for you who else, Cass. And it just magnified itself into something just greater than I ever imagined. How long ago was that, Brenda? That was in like 2005, and I've been dedicated to genealogy, and I love helping everybody else too, so that's one reason why I chose to to be the registrar of this chapter. So. And now your little granddaughter knows someone else. Oh yeah, she knows a lot <laughs> of who else. <laughs> that's great. As I said, we have sitting next to you, Francis Andrews. Welcome to the Mark White Show, Francis. Thank you so much, Mark. And what was your interest in joining the Daughters of the American Revolution 
Well, Mark, I'm an octogenarian, and I've always loved my family and had never spent any time doing research. I was at an event here in Athens one day, and Doris Estes invited me to come to DAR. I did, and I have just fallen in love with it. I just thoroughly enjoy it. We, we, we just do things together, and we're, we're a good team. For those in the Tennessee Valley and surrounding area, the Heritage Festival hosted by the John Wade Kyes DAR chapter will be taking place on Sunday, May 23rd from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Alabama Veterans Museum and Archives in Athens, Alabama. A $10 per person donation is requested and children are free. Be sure to follow The Mark White Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Welcome to another edition of the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show, where we're sharing stories to encourage and inspire. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. Losing a loved one is hard, but losing a loved one and not having an estate plan is even harder. Attorney Harlan Mitchell witnessed what not having an estate plan can do to families and decided to use his experience to do something about it. I encourage you to go to BamaEstatePlanning.com or give Harlan Mitchell a call at 256-216-9884. Again, that website is BamaEstatePlanning.com. Let Harlan Mitchell help you with estate planning. Do it for those you love and do it today. This is the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show. On this Make a Difference Minute, I have Miss Yannicka Pride, special education teacher, self-contained autistic teacher at East Limestone School in Limestone County, Alabama. I always wanted to be a teacher when I was younger. I always, we always played teacher and everything. I kind of drifted from that and said, oh, I want to be a nurse. And then I want to uh, get into broadcast journalism. But then my path led me right back to becoming a teacher. And then when I found out about a speech pathologist, I really loved it. And I said, okay, that way I could be a teacher. And then the passion that I have for kids and being want to be able to help others, I just love it. I really do. So that was how I ended up in, in being a teacher. For my parents, they're very appreciative of everything that we do. And they tell us that all the time. All of them say that they're grateful, they're thankful that they do have some teachers and people that are willing to help them, that are willing to help their kids. So they really like it. They're, they're very appreciative of everything that we do. And the support that they give is top notch as well. So it, it makes a complete difference. It makes a difference in how you can adapt in your classroom and how well that your, your students do. I had one parent and she sold t-shirts. She does it every year. And this particular time she came in, she said, this is the money I want to give for your class so you all can have this money in your classroom account. And I just started crying after she left because I couldn't believe it that she took the money. That she, And that to me, that's saying, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate your team. I appreciate everything you all are doing for him. Just the fact that the money that she normally takes and raises it for something for her son, she took it and said, put this back into your classroom account. And that just meant the world. So that right there was her way of saying thank you. Be sure to follow The Mark White Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Welcome to another edition of the Make a Difference Minute from The Mark White Show, where we're sharing stories to encourage and inspire. Whether you're new to aviation or an experienced pilot looking to advance your skills, Go Vertical Aviation has you covered. With an excellent learning atmosphere and a staff committed to excellence in education, Go Vertical Aviation will customize a learning program just for you. For more information, go to GoVerticalAviation.com or call 256-412-5226. Be sure to follow Go Vertical Aviation on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Don't just go. Go Vertical. This is the Make a Difference Minute from the Mark White Show. On this Make a Difference Minute, I have Matt Melancon. While serving in the U.S. Army on patrol in Afghanistan in 2011, Matt's vehicle drove over an IED. Matt was evacuated to San Antonio where he underwent more than 18 surgeries over two years, trying to put his feet back together again. Finally, thanks to a meeting with some civilian amputees who showed him that amputations were not the end of the world, Matt had both of his legs amputated and moving forward, decided to live his life to its fullest. 
as I went through this process and discovered this link and people were reaching out to me, and granted, I'm surrounded by the greatest generation of disabled veteran the world has ever seen, nominal human beings. But for some reason in my mind, it was a case of like, they are them and I am me. And there was no connection. It's very strange. I mean, I've had incredible support throughout the whole process and some great mentors who have really helped me shape my story and also something about sharing my story and learning to own it and also organize it really helped me organize my experiences as well. These incredible individuals that became quote unquote disabled in their youth, you know, some of them seven years old, some of them younger. And this life that I had been terrified of, that was just the only life they knew. Something about the power they had within them and the way they saw the world, it just shattered this little wall I had built around myself that was keeping people out. Be sure to follow The Mark White Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Again, we would like to thank Brian Larson, Ambassador for Carry the Load, for joining us here on The Mark White Show today, as well as Julianne Hansen with Julianne Hansen Fine Art and Pottery to talk about the Alabama Poppy Project 2021 in Prattville, Alabama. We also appreciate the brand new episode of Kyla's Corner from Kyla Carter. The Mark White Show is here to recognize difference makers and share their stories to encourage and inspire. I hope that the Mark White Show is an encouragement to you and that you will share it with your family, your friends, and your neighbors. Let them know about the Mark White Show and what we're trying to do to make a difference in our communities around the country and the world. I hope you'll go ahead and follow the Mark White Show on Facebook Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And also subscribe to the Mark White Show podcast via Apple iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Audioboom, SoundCloud, Blueberry, YouTube, and TuneIn Radio. You have been listening to a Saturday edition of the Mark White Show, and this is Mark White encouraging you to find your purpose by making a difference in someone's life today. Let's all do something good today